You've probably already seen Dragon Ball, you've probably already seen Naruto, you've probably already read One Piece. But what about Shaman King? Betray my bias, right from the start, I am the only person that I know that is actually a Shaman King fan, and I could not be more excited about the new anime coming in 2021. In preparation, I reread the manga once again, and it needs talking about. So today, we're going to be seeing if it is worth a recommendation and ask the question, should you read Shaman King? As always, we'll be staying spoiler free, so let's crack in. Shaman King is, in the best ways, a typical shonen. 300 chapters written by Hiroyuki Takei covering all of the tropes you'd come to expect from this kind of story. Before we get into it, we do need to clear up which version we're reading. Shaman King has an original run and a so-called complete edition in the Kanzenban format. The main difference is there are additional chapters near the end and an extended ending. We're going to be talking about this version out of the two as it really is the complete experience. So what's it about? Shaman King follows the story of Yo Asakura, a shaman living in Japan. Shamans are the central concept of this story. They can talk to ghosts and communicate with the spirits of the land. They can use the power of these spirits to help them or, as most of the story is about, battle with them. Shortly into the story we learn about this competition that Yo wants to enter called the Shaman Fight, which essentially is a big global tournament to see who is the world's strongest shaman. So we follow Yo and the friends he makes along the way on his journey to become the Shaman King. Let's see how the power system works. So in Shaman King, the energy that they use is called Furioku. This is essentially your spiritual power level. The more Furioku you have, the stronger a spirit you can control, and the stronger you can manifest that spirit that you have. Spirits aren't just human stands though, they can be manifested into weapons or positions and can really be molded into whatever you need them to be. This is the standard baseline that shamans operate from. Takei pulls from a lot of different spiritual traditions from all around the globe. You get environmental protectors, you get Taoism, you get Egyptian mysticism or European pseudoscience. Each adds different flavours in the way they react and interact and the different spirits that they have. It brings this beautiful diversity to each of the battles. I see some people like to draw similarities to Jojo's, but Shaman King works much more from a consistent baseline. Like everyone has a 50% star platinum and then they all add their own secret sources on top. We mentioned earlier that this story is full of these classic shonen tropes, and that is not at all to the story's discredit. There are a lot of these staples like the power of friendship and these weird stupid power jumps and inconsistencies, but there is also this, for want of a better word, soul to Shaman King. It's hard to talk about without spoilers, but there'll be a link at the end of the video if you're interested in spoilery discussions. To keep it spoiler free, Shaman King has a surprisingly strong emotional core, based around Yo as the main character. So while certainly you'll be able to tell exactly where the series is going while you're reading, it does manage to stay engaging enough to be worth your time. Like most shonen, this story does suffer from power scaling. As the series goes on, it does need to do more to be able to show you how people have powered up. The best comparison that I can make is to Naruto. In the beginning, it's all this easy to follow little tricks and abilities, and by the end, it's apocalyptic ninja magic. Same deal here. It can be inconsistent and ridiculous, but I think that's just part and parcel for your stereotypical shonen. Sadly, to Shaman King's detriment, it doesn't get that one moment that others do. You know that one moment that really just ties the story together into your memory forever. Lee dropping the weights, Gohan going Super Saiyan 2, the White Beard War. Shaman King just struggles to hit any really high climaxes like that. On the flip side, one of the things I really do want to praise the story for is for explaining holes that other stories would just leave open. You know in other stories where you get those situations where the world is on the brink of collapse and the only people doing something about it are a ragtag group of pre-teens? Well in Shaman King, these kind of situations are bothered to be explained and in a way that actually works for the world and for the series. The story gets a lot more consistent than you'd expect, and even when a very specific new ability coming in around the halfway point comes in, it still works in the world that's being created. Let's talk about the art style. It tends itself towards a more overdrawn, cartoony manga sort of style. You can see from these panels the classic big eyes and overdone hairdos. 
every single important character in this series is incredibly distinct. They each have their own outfits and defining features, you always know who is who, and Takei is able to get some real emotion into these faces. For the battles, action is more Dragon Ball Z filler episode kind of style, a lot of talking and a few big actions with the occasional ongoing clashes. It's not bad by any means, but it doesn't have the speed or flow that other manga get to achieve. It is really fun though, imagine being a little kid again smashing toys against each other that have no business being in the same toy box, a modern soldier fighting a space gorilla, or a martial artist fighting a lion fighting a super fighting robot. This is what Shaman King fights are like. They're just cool. Okay, so I like to praise this manga, but we should talk about some of the problematic aspects. There are these two characters whose biggest trait is that they are creepy and have big balls. There is a character that shows up halfway who, for no reason, spends most of the series without a shirt on that leads to the cringy, oh you pervert, hijinks. There is a black character that is drawn with these big lips like it's the early 90s. They're not enough to write off the story altogether, but are definitely cringy distractions in an otherwise enjoyable story. Let's also talk about the ending. Skip here if you don't want to know anything about it. Okay, the ending. It's bad. There are some really great parts in the build-up, but overall it does fall flat. There is a very clear idea of what Takei is trying to do, and in theory I really agree with the ending, but it just doesn't hit like it should. And that's all I can really say without spoiling. It's another classic shonen trope, having a disappointing ending. So should you read Shaman King? Yes, you should. I can understand why it didn't rise to the cultural relevance of Dragon Ball or Naruto, but overall, this story is just really enjoyable and certainly worth your time. You're going into a story that hits all of these classic hallmarks of shonen with some beautifully memorable characters and a really lovely emotional core. Not only that, but a dynamic power and visual style that will certainly leave an impression. If you don't mind spoilers, or you have already read it, try this video here. I want to talk about some spoilery themes things and how this manga hit me personally. Otherwise, thanks for watching. This has been CG, and I'll see you G's in the next one.